What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG Career Mode, it's episode number 57 uh, heading into today's episode, there's loads to get through today and we should play in all four of the competitions we're going for in the quadruple, we've got Brath in the FA Cup last 16 first and uh, we'll have massive games in the Premier League as well coming as we're right now 9 clear with 17 to go, title is in our hands to throw away. I'll try and squeeze in the Carabao Cup final against Chelsea, but for sure we'll also have the first leg of our Champions League last 16 clash away at the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. So, loads to get through. I'm going to start off with Bradford City in the FA Cup last 16, with a chance to reach the quarter, uh, last 32, sorry, with a chance to reach the last 16. Come on, you swans. As I always say, you know, I get asked a lot for Road to Glory team suggestions in the Football League, in the English Football Pyramid. Um, and, and Bradford City, if you're looking to start in the fourth tier, the lowest tier, excellent, excellent team to use. Uh, so just real briefly, Bradford, the Bantams, uh, playing in the city itself, which gets a real bad rep in uh, in England, uh, which I, I've always felt is quite quite harsh. I, I, I've been to Bradford a few times. It's not that bad. Like people, I always feel like in, in every country, it's like one city or one place. Everyone's like, you know, like the, the natives like, I wouldn't want to go there. It's not that bad. Bradford's not bad at all. And it's a really nice little place in the surrounding areas as well. But uh, other than the, the, uh, the geography, uh, Bradford playing at Valley Parade, it was the site of uh, the infamous Valley Parade fire. Uh, obviously a tragic uh, event in uh, in British football uh, a few decades ago. Um, the club, I believe, spent two or three years in the Premier League back in the late 90s. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bantams fans as well. But it's a, a big city, Bradford, in Yorkshire. It's, uh, like, again, not, not, not a bad place at all, no matter what some people have, you believe. And uh, it's a side with, a um, again, a desperation to be back. Yes, Jordan, great finish competing once again for top tier football like where they spent a brief time back in the late 90s they've also got really iconic home shirts as well it's a shame that their shorts and socks are both white and this has always been a gripe of mine in fc that you can't change the shorts and the socks for example in a game like this where you're playing like an all-white team so there's a minor clash not much of one but a minor clash but even so the bantams yeah i would i would definitely recommend them for a uh, for an rtg for the, uh, for the fall they've had, for the financial problems they've had, looking for a uh, return to, uh, to past success, if you will. I should say as well, Swansea versus Bradford was the uh, League Cup final back in 2012 or 2013. One or two, can't remember. But uh, yeah, Bradford, it was when Bradford went on that epic run. They, uh, they captured the hearts of all neutrals in uh, the English football pyramid. And they were on this amazing run in the League Cup. They knocked out Aston Villa. They knocked out Arsenal. It was an incredible, incredible run. Getting to the final, uh, only to, in the end, get humbled by Swansea. I think it was 5-0 at Wembley when Swansea won that uh, first major honour. But, uh, yeah, Brad Bradford, uh, one of the, uh, the rare football league sides that went all the way to a, uh, to a major domestic cup final. And, again, it wasn't that long ago. Just over a decade ago now in... Um, in a, a true Cinderella story that sadly did see the clock strike midnight at Wembley. As Canoon is denied. Still 1 0 here though, but uh, the Bulls, uh, sorry, the Bantams, sorry, not the Bulls. That's the other team from Bradford. Uh, <laughs> the Bantams currently yet to uh, to test me at all. I think get a second goal and this is going to be done. It should be here as well. Canoonum, Vazquez for the finish. Oh, he's put it wide. As we survive that last attack, that is going to do it. The Swans make it through to the last 16. Not quite as dominant as the win over the Bantams in the Carabao Cup final over a decade ago. But wins are wins and goal difference means nothing in cup football. We're into the last 16. Of Evan Ferguson picking up yet another player of the month award. I think it's third or fourth this season, which is ludicrous. We'll head into the following game. Manchester United home, 17 games to go in the league, top by nine points, and on a 10 game winning run in all competition. Let's extend it here in South Wales. Come on, you swans. I mean, to be fair, has there been a better player in the league than Evan Ferguson right now this season? Possibly Haaland, who's got a few more goals, but only a few more. Evan Ferguson showing that whilst he. Uh, he does want that big blockbuster move to Real Madrid or Bayern at some point. Whilst he's still a Swansea player, he's going to give his all. And as Charlie Connick almost opened the scoring, Onana prevents an early assist for Ferguson, an early goal for Connick, and an early lead for Swansea. Fast start, though. Let's find that opener. Oh! And when you're in great form, things like that do normally find a back in the net. Still 0-0. Rasmus to Amadeo. 
Oh, that's amazing from Dyer. He's just made two swans collide there in a, in a weird way. I kind of want this to result in a goal, but it's, it's not going to, I think, now. No, it's one. Oh, that was naughty. Absolutely. He just made two swans collide. Someone called the RSPCA. That's animal abuse. But as Ferguson finds Noosa, we're away down the left. He steps inside. It's Noosa. He's denied by Onana. And it's still goalless. Excellent start in this opening half an hour, though. Flair style, but no goal thus far. Hodgman dragging Pacho out wide. He's getting back into the middle, really, as Amadeo finds Hodgland. Lovely slip ball through. What a save, Scott Clark. Denying Kefren to Ram. And then, oh, the follow-up shot by Hodgland sneaks in. And the Red Devils are in front. Now, we haven't lost a game since the Arsenal defeat here in November. This might be the first instead. It's been a really good contest. And Rasmund Hodgland has been fantastic recently for Manchester United. And it's great to see it after his early struggles. He's just scored one of the goals of the season there. Flicks it up to himself and then volleys home for his 14th of the season in the league. Well, the Great Dane, 89 overall now in the save, giving the visitors the lead. And after an epic unbeaten run, it might well be coming to an end here on Wednesday night. There's Connick, skips away. Noosa, Ferguson, dinks it. Oh, just over the bar. Tell you what, what a game this has been. Really, really fun to play. And I say this all the time, but these are my favourite games, man. I know it's nice when you win. Like we had that 6-0 thrashing away against Brentford earlier this season. You know, you win 4 or 5 nil at times. It can be nice, but oh, what a turn by Diego. But these are the games I enjoy the most. Tense, tight, nervy, action-packed even. But sometimes separated by bits of quality and magic. Ahmad Diego with a wonderful turn and finish. Maybe not quite as good as Kobe Mino's finish against Wolves last week. What a goal and game winner that was at Molyneux, but that's still absolutely naughty. Banishes Flamingo to the Shadow Realm and drills past Scott Clark. Game over, undefeated run ended, winning run finished. Manchester United, who are huge three points in Swansea. Yeah, this has been a, uh, a sublime game. Really, really fun to play. But you know what? Like, you just gotta, sometimes you've got to tip your hat and say, fair play, they were the better team, man. Really, really good game, but you can't win them all. And I always say this, like, if you've been beaten but you've played well, just someone's been better than you on the day. Tip your hat, say fair play. I did all I could do, but in the end it wasn't enough. Fair play. Um, so after the game, we'll see how Arsenal Man City got on. And Man City won and Arsenal won. Two, two tough games there as well. Away and then the road in the North London derby. So it means that heading into that game in West London, the gap is cut to six. We still have the superior goal difference, which feels like an extra point. But our fifth loss of the season still haven't had a draw all year long yet. And the chasing back, gaining some ground. Right, following game, we are the pace setters. Chelsea away. Uh, no, sorry, this is Monday night. Oh, okay, let's, let's advance through to that one. I thought that was the uh, the Friday. It's not. It's, oh, it's Sunday, actually. Sorry, my apologies. But we shall see. And, oh, wins for both once again. Here come Manchester City and Arsenal, both with wins as the gap is now cut to three. What do we do at the game now? Right, following game, the Chelsea away in West London aim to bounce back here in the title race. Has had new life breathed into it. Big clash here away against Pochettino's side in a dress rehearsal for the League Cup final. Come on, you Swans. I don't know if anyone caught the Chelsea win at Villa Park on Wednesday night. I watched the first half and then went to the gym and listened to the second half on the radio. Uh, but from what I saw and the highlights and what I heard as well, it appeared to be Poch's finest hour thus far as Chelsea manager. Pleased to see he's come under so much criticism, come under a lot of fire this season as well in his first year. And I'm like... It's one of my, my main gripes with modern day football. Like I always say, I'm, I'm, in terms of football, like I'm, I'm a firm believer that it's never been better. Oh, Ferguson, what a miss. It's never been better. We've never seen a higher standard of football. I don't yearn for the old days in terms of quality at all. But I do feel as though in this kind of instant gratification era, we're too expectant of rapid success. And Poch has come in and there's already been so many calls for him to get sacked, especially after the Wolves loss on the weekend. We'll talk about a bounce back, right? That 3-1 win at a tough ground at Villa Park. So much criticism of the guy. And I'm like, he's inherited a completely new side of players that are going to take a long time to gel. You know, the team is going through a major transitional period. Oh, Cole Palmer puts it over the bar. Um, he's developing Cole brilliantly, let's be honest here. What a, what a, what a buy he's been from Man City. And, uh, he's, you know, he's got him into the FA Cup last 16. There's still a long way to the Premier League campaign to go. And they're also in a Carabao Cup final. And granted, yes, they took out a challenge of sides to get there in the semis. But listen, you can only beat what's in front of you. 
And uh, it's, oh, it's a good finish there. As far as I'm concerned, he just needs more time. I, I, I feel confident Poch will get a major honour or two for Chelsea within the first two to three years. But he, he needs the time. He, he needs the time to, to gel and work with this side. But a win on Wednesday night, from what I saw and what I heard, was, was very impressive indeed. And uh, a, a bright spot in what has otherwise been a tough season for, uh, for Chelsea fans. Even so, 1-0 down here and a chance of back-to-back -back losses. We talk about it like public transport in England, man. You wait so long for a bus and then two come along at the same time on your route. Same here. 16 games for Woods without a loss and now possibly back-to-back. -back. The, over the overpoweredness of form. We're, we're no stranger to it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, what a season he's having. But it, this is why I say it. When you lose one, you've got to win the following game. Form is just that overpowered. Back-to-back -back defeats for the Swans and feeling the pressure with the chase impact breathing down our necks. This is going to be another tough defeat to take. And we've just had a draw for the last 16 of the FA Cup right before that Man City game. And we've got Brentford at home as we take on the side that are right now bottom of the table. But heading into our following game, this is a meeting between first and second, where if we lose, we could potentially drop to second as well. Back-to-back -back losses are now heading into the biggest game of the season. Manchester City home. We've got a great record against them, to be fair, but mainly away. But with this one in South Wales on the back of back-to-back -back defeats, this is without a shadow of a doubt. Again, we cannot afford to have three straight losses. Biggest game of the season, first versus second, potential title decider, Man City in South Wales. Come on, you swans. Well, I should clarify, we have a decent record against Man City in the league. Um, but we've lost to them back-to-back -back in Community Shields. And we lost to them in the FA Cup final as well. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's decent at the Etihad in the league. But, I mean, here we, we've lost to them before as well. It's not, you know, <laughs> this is still a better team than ours. And I've said this before, but even though we won the title last year, even though we made great strides forward, we're still a notch below them. But as Noosa gets on the run, it's a great chance for an opener. It's Noosa who fires it in to the far corner. And Swansea lead eight minutes in. Biggest game of the season. Feisty affair between the two as always, I'm sure. But it's a goal for our number eight in minute eight and Swan strike early. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Do it again, do it again, do it again. I say this all the time, it's always working, keep doing it. Noosa, Noosa, Noosa! Two goals in 15 minutes, and the XC goal bags a brace as Swansea on the back of back to back losses are back home and back to their best. Antonio with the ball roll round Araujo, round Rudiger, and into the top corner. Swansea 2, Manchester City 0. What a way to bounce back. Antonio, Antonio. Antonio, 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 Noosa. Oh goodness, what a player. What a what a buy. What a start. What a team. What a season. What a start of the game. I think we just said that. It was still tattoo. Oliver bends one. Oh! Absolutely beautiful from the fin. And I talk about this often, but this guy's curve feels like it's 99. It's why, with practically all of my players, I rarely finesse it. With Oliver, I will, because that's where he's at his best. Bending the ball into the corner. He did that earlier this season at the Etihad, and he's done it again. Swansea 3, Man City 0, 25 minutes in. When you talk about pulling out of the bag and responding to failure... This is it. This has been glorious. Delic to Tattoo. Nice turn. Finds Charlie Connick. I see you, Evan. Oh, brilliantly done. Delic! Oh, it would have been brilliant how Delic got a goal, man. I think it would have been his first of the year for the, uh, for the skipper out there. Great save by Edison to prevent it becoming four. But we have just absolutely dominated this first half, man. And I said it, this is a cracking rivalry, man. Don't tell, don't tell me that these two teams don't like each other. 
This has been a dominant first half display and kind of akin to that FA Cup semi a couple of years ago between Man City and Liverpool when the Reds were freeing it up at the break at Wembley. We have just absolutely put the sword to Manchester City thus far. But there's a long way to go. Oh! It's Haaland is denied by Scott Clark. And as we approach the final whistle, just trying to keep our clean sheet for Scott now. You know, I've surrendered a few already this season. I'll be really annoyed if I do it again. But no, we're going to be alright this time. That is going to do it. One of our wins of the season. And it's back to back. 3 0 victories against Manchester City. I think, was it 3 0 at the Etihad earlier this season? I'm pretty sure we won by 3 regardless. But. Dominant display, dominant win. I will go six clear of Guardiola's side. Back on track in the best possible way. Yep, how often do you hear me say it? Don't talk about it, be about it. And, oh, Arsenal beat the Blades 3-2. I was keeping an eye on that game. We saw the score updates in the top right. I saw the Blades level twice, but in the end, the gun has come through. Um, so it means now in the in the league table, uh, again, six, six clear of Guardiola's side with 14 to go but four clear of Arsenal, who have now become our closest title challenger. Right, uh, moving straight on from that, first leg of the Champions League, last 16 away in Rome. Got the games today, all seven are going to be absolutely massive, because I'll definitely squeeze in that Carrick Cup final against Chelsea as our episode closer today. First leg, Roma away at the Stadio Olimpico. No Jose Mourinho anymore, but still, you probably called him the dark horses to go far in this Champions League. Here in Rome for the first leg. Let's get a huge win to take back to South Wales, Comedy Swans. We'll see Jose Mourinho sat during this season despite leading them to two European finals on the trot. Uh, obviously winning one, losing one. Oh, a lovely slip ball through there. Oh, no, it's uh, club, club legend Daniela De Rossi in charge. He was a, uh, a one club man. Oh, one club man until he, uh, he went and spent like half a year at Boca Juniors. <laughs> It kind of kind of shades of Steven Gerrard at Liverpool, and then people forget that his his final year was uh, was with LA Galaxy. It's the same with Daniela De Rossi. All those years, club legend, one club man, and then he just goes to Boca Juniors for half a year. You know, as Brennan Johnson gets his first goal in a Swansea shirt and gives us the opener half an hour in in Rome. But I love that. You know, I really really do. After all those years of service, after all that years of dedication, and listen, there's nothing cooler than hanging up your boots as a one club man. But I still think it's so, so cool to be able to just choose where you want to play your final year. I often talk about that. Where do you want to play your final years? Where do you want to play your retirement years? Where do you want to see it out, you know? If not at one club, having a choice to go kind of where you want, that's that's like a, a, a symbol of a legend of the game there in Gerard and De Rossi. But they could just say, like, Daniela De Rossi was like, yeah, I want to play for Boca Juniors. I want to play for Boca Juniors. So they let him they let him go in. And I think he spent half a year there before retiring. Same with Gerard. Gerard's like, you know, I want to, I want to go to, to Los Angeles and play a year there at LA Galaxy before retirement. A sign of a true legend of the game where you can just choose where you want to see out your final year as opposed to kind of being forced to retire wherever you can get a contract, you know? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, lovely offload. Oh, Clark, what a save and a rebound blocked by Marrera and cleared away. What a save, Scott Clark there. Absolutely superb. And it keeps us still leading to the break. Not many chances, but a couple of good ones for either side. In the end, we took ours and Clark bails us out on the one-on-one. -on -one. I was just thinking, like, if that was me, like, just going back to the point I was making earlier about you know, getting to retire where you want. If that was me, so for those that, uh, that don't know, it was Evan Ferguson. Oh, gets a little bit lucky. I don't think he'll claim that one as sure as to flex it over his keeper. If it was me and I'd carved out a career for myself, I don't know, Crystal Palace or whatever, I I'd love to be able to be like, yeah, I want to I wanna go and play for Flamengo. Like, you know, because I've got, I've got a bit of a soft spot for, for Flamengo. I, I, I love Brazil. I've always said that like, Rio, de, Rio de Janeiro is my uh, my final destination. So what I mean by that is, um, I've talked about it before, but like for me, I've got, you know, quite a few life goals. I've, I've, hit, I've hit a couple, which is pretty cool. But uh, if, I, if I hit them all, that's my that's my dream destination for a holiday, Rio de Janeiro. Always wanted to go, always uh, wanted to visit. And uh, I, it's basically, it's, it's locked, it's off limits for me. It's like a map, a global map, it's, it's, got, it's locked. I'm not allowed to press X and go there yet. But uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be able to say, yeah, I want to play a year at Maracana. I, I want to play a year with Flamengo. You know, how cool would that be, man? Seriously. He was so tuned in here on the back of the deflection. Ferguson does claim it. And I think this first leg is going to be ours for the taking from here. Going back to South Wales, wanted a win, and we should be able to see it out. 
And that is going to do it. Comfortable first leg victory in Roma. What a way to bounce back. Back-to-back -back defeats followed by massive back-to-back -back wins and clean sheets as well. Two-goal lead heading home and we're nine minutes away from a place in the quarters. Right, two more games then. So we're going to play our League Cup final against Chelsea. Uh, Spurs in the penultimate game today. Four clear at the top of the table with 14 games to go and a chance to potentially extend it to seven with Destiny still in our own hands. Come on, you swans. Noosa sent down the left-hand side. I can see Ferguson asking for it. Oh, did he win the ball? For oh, okay. Well, fair enough. I thought he came through the back of him there. Fair play. Great tackle. But you know what's also great? This through ball. And Charlie Connick, who has just hit 90 overall. I just saw it. Has just given us the lead in North London as well. Great ball by James Garner, to be fair. Into Evan Ferguson, who he himself offloads, and it's Charlie with the finish. One's in front. Oh, finally, that goal update bug in the top right is gone. 28 minutes to go, still leading by one. Very little going on in the game, I must say. You know, it's, it's, it's often the way, isn't it? You see an early goal and you're like, oh, fireworks, going to be a lot more today, and then nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing after that early opener. As, oh, Noose has done brilliantly there. We still might get a second, and this will do it. Ferguson's in acres of space, and he's got to finish this. Evan Ferguson clips it in off the post to double up and surely give Swansea their third win on the trot. And back-to-back -back league wins as well. Lovely finish by Evan. Surely game over now. Oh, great goal update to Frozen again on the top right. <laughs> So frustrating, but you know what? I'm just going to pretend this means that Bournemouth are going to hold Arsenal to a 2-2 draw because that's what that goal means there. As Evan Ferguson gets going on a 19 to make it free. Demolition in North London, three wins on the trot and great form heading in to that Carabao Cup final against Chelsea. Swan soaring again. Yeah, these are going to be three really impressive victories against three really good teams as well. All of them clean sheets as Kulisevsky heads over. Man City at home, Spurs away, both 3 nils, And a win away in Rome in the first leg too. Yeah, Swans, you've got to feel good about that. Excellent win. Let's see if, uh, if Bournemouth did hold Arsenal then. And see if we've gone six clear at the top. Fingers crossed. No, Arsenal win it late. Once again, which means that the gap will remain at four. But with 13 games to go, Destiny is still in our own hands. Win 12 out of the 13. And yes, that's easier said than done. And we will be champions. Forget what the Gunners are doing. Just focus on our own form. So this is it. Final game of today's episode. And first of potentially three finals this season. In what will hopefully be the first of potentially four major honours this season. Yep, chasing the quad. This is the first we could win. The Carabao Cup final against Chelsea at Wembley. We're heading into it on the back of three straight wins. We're going for our third League Cup in club history and second of the save. Certainly favourites as well. But Chelsea's lineup is very strong indeed. Going with a 4 2 3 1 with Manuel Dashvili between the sticks and the back four being Hakimi. Uh, Rodriguez, a region, not sure who of. Uh, Diakite and Dylan Williams there left back. The DM duo is fantastic of Moises Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez. On the wings, they've got Noni Madiuke and Diego Moreira. And Cole Palmer is their player. Playmaker supporting Valise, 85 rated up top as well. We might be favourites, but Chelsea have beaten us back to back in the league this season as we hope it will be third time lucky as we go for our first major honour this season. Come on, you swans. So far within this save, we've uh, we've got two again. I think it's I think it's four domestic cup finals now. One per season. I think that's I think that's right. It's hard to remember. You get you get so far in as oh Conic almost caught Georgie out there. It is so hard to remember, but I think the pattern has gone League Cup, FA Cup, League Cup, FA Cup. No, sorry, FA Cup, League Cup, FA Cup, League Cup. There we go. I told you it was hard to remember. But uh, so far, yeah, our record in domestic cup finals is as Evan Ferguson is also denied. Played three, won two, lost one. One, one FA Cup final, uh, lost one FA Cup final, won one League Cup final, and this is the next one up. So fingers crossed, it'll be uh, another win. And the pattern will be broken here. As we're still tied at 0-0. We've got a good start here. Nonny for Chelsea. Poking it through the gap. And that's going to be Pacho's every day of the week. And as we look to stay tight defensively against Chelsea here again. We've conceded four goals against them in two games. And not scored in either of those clashes. Yeah, our league, our league double against them this season. Ended in defeat in both games. Oh, poor pass. Can I squeeze that through? No, 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 no. 
So, like I said, we're a better team, but in terms of the form book against them, it's it's Chelsea who have got the better record. So, what's your money on? A higher calibre of a team or a side who have got a better individual record? Tattoo! Oh! Looking to bend one in far corner as he often does. Just couldn't squeeze it in between those posts. Still 0-0. No -no. It's, it's all Swansea in the opening half an hour here, but yet to find a breakthrough to show for it. Jow to Noosa. Connick's in the middle and he'll find him. And Antonio keeps running. And this has got to be one. It's really well held up. And Noosa isn't going to miss that. Swans finally draw first blood at Wembley in a half of control. We just needed one to hit the back of the net. And it does. Antonio Noosa often comes up big in the big games. And he's done it once again. Sent through by Evan and drills it past Mamar Dashvili. Swans strike first at Wembley. And the final chance for Chelsea before the half comes to its close. It's, oh, it's a dangerous delivery by Cole Palmer. Great block on Moreira. Cross in the middle. Oh, what a save by Rushworth. Brilliant, brilliant save by Carl. The only change from our normal starting 11 between the sticks is he's our domestic cup goalkeeper. And Scott Clark will be applauding that one because Carl has just made an incredible save on an incredible bicycle kick. Chelsea springing into life right at the end of the first half, but Swans, courtesy of Carl, will lead at the break. What a save! Tattoo to Ferguson. And now Gomez, and a chance to double up here. Antonio, oh, he had to do it. He had to do it. Charlie Connick, the beneficiary, and a 150 million pound man returning from Dortmund makes it to a warning sign given to us right before the break by Chelsea a dagger given to Chelsea right after the restart Antonio Noosa sent through by Jao Gomez and what a wonderful little assist for Connick to give us surely the dagger even with 36 minutes to go Swans tune it up and I think our name is going to be on the trophy there's Noosa finds Ferguson. I'll tell you what, it definitely will be now. If, oh, what a huge tackle it would have been had Connick been sent forward there. It's, it's ours to throw away from here. There's Gomez finds Noosa. And, and Jao Gomez has once again had a brilliant game for us. And here he is again. And this time we'll get the hockey assist for the brace. Game over. Charlie Connick gets his second and makes it free. One down, three to go in the search of the quad. Flamingo. He's going to go for it. And oh my goodness, Manuel Ashvili appeared to lose the flight of the ball there. He made a couple of brilliant saves early in the game, but wow. He got back on time. He just seemed to lose flight of the ball as he pushes Vasquez's header behind. But the wait for a, uh, for a halfway line goal might go on. But the wait for our first trophy of the season is over. Brandon Vasquez, who I only really bring on to be an aerial threat from corners, has just got... The fourth goal that will wrap it up. As the boys will come to me to celebrate because we know we're all in this together. Swansea 4, Chelsea nil, One down, three to go. Well, we were favourites pre-game, but I didn't expect it to be as comfortable as a victory as this. To be fair, our Carnot made that amazing save late in the first. You never know. It would have been tied at the break and the score, well, the scoreline would have been different regards, but it could have ended up being a completely different result. But in the end, that big save and three in the second half ensure we run out of victors for our first of potentially four trophies this season chasing the court. Our second League Cup of the save, our third in club history, and again, potentially first of four major honours as we chase an unprecedented quadruple. Swansea, Carabao Cup winners. And as Dedic gets his hands on a trophy for the first time since becoming captain of our first 11, you love to see that. And the Swans run out of comfortable winners. We shall leave it there for today's episode, guys. So massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode on the back of winning our first of, again, potentially four major honours as we chase that unprecedented quadruple. We'll return 
with the FA Cup last 16 against Brentford. We'll return with the second leg of our Champions League last 16 at home to Roma, leading 2-0 heading back to South Wales. And we'll have more big games in the Premier League as we only stay top of the table and pull away from the chasing pack with 13 games to go and a four-point gap. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the RTG Career Mode as the hunt for the quadruple continues very soon.